out on this busy day to join us for our, our news conference. I'm Peter Baines. I'm the executive director of the New York Confer Conference of Mayors. I have with me today Tim Creamer, who's the executive director of the New York State School Boards Association. Steve Aquario is the executive director of the New York State Association of Counties. And from the New York State Association of Towns, we have Lori Mithen, who is their general counsel. Uh, we're here today in a unified fashion to talk about property tax relief uh, and shared services and what we believe is the best approach to, to achieving property tax relief uh, going forward for this state. Uh, we fully support the intent of the governor's tax freeze proposal, uh, and I believe all New Yorkers do, uh, but we are concerned that in its current form there are aspects of it that are unworkable. Uh, that are flawed and therefore will not achieve the property tax relief that that we all would like to see. Uh, what we're going to do today is uh, I'm going to have Tim Creamer speak next. He's going to talk a bit about our concerns with the tax freeze plan. I then am going to discuss an alternative concept that we've developed that we'd like to uh, flesh out for you today. And then Steve Aquario will talk a little bit about mandate relief and even more importantly uh, new, in terms of being newsworthy uh, an, an initiative that we jointly, the four associations, are going to begin and, and announce today having to do with shared services. So with that, I will turn the mic over to Tim Creamer. Thank you, Peter. Um, my role here is to kind of explain a little bit about what this tax cap freeze and uh, efficiency savings program is all about. Uh, Please uh, allow me to talk in a little bit of detail on that. I don't know what all you know about it, so I'll, I'll just give you a little overview on that. But then talk about some of the drawbacks to the plan as we see it and lay out, uh, in, a, in a general sense, what our recommendations are before I turn it over to Steve, who will go into detail on that. Uh, a basic overview of this freeze proposal, as, as proposed by the governor, would give property taxpayers a personal income tax credit for increases in their property tax bills for the next two years, subject to two conditions. In 2014 and 15, the jurisdiction, the taxing jurisdiction, be it a school district, be it a municipality, has to stay within their property tax cap. If they stay within their property tax cap and that, that budget is passed, uh, then the voters within that jurisdiction are going to be getting a rebate. Uh, uh, of some sort uh, equal to the increase in their taxes from year one to year two. In the second year, uh, those same taxpayers will get a tax rebate uh, if the taxing jurisdiction stays within the cap and, and, this is important, and the taxing jurisdiction develops some sort of a efficiency plan that is going to show how, in the aggregate, a number of, of jurisdictions in, within a county, within a region, are going to share or consolidate services and eliminate duplication and overlap. Uh, this is what the governor refers to as an efficiency plan. So that's year one and two, the freeze, if you will. Then you move into three years where this efficiency plan is put into place. In 2016 and 17, the, efficient, the efficiency plan must achieve aggregate savings of at least 1% of the entire total tax levy for all the jurisdictions within this plan. And if you fail to, receive, to, to achieve that 1% of the plan savings, state aid could be withheld from those jurisdictions. It requires a huge amount of trust and cooperation uh, among these jurisdictions to achieve that. Year number two, you have this efficiency plan continuing on, and now those same jurisdictions are going to have to achieve aggregate savings of at least 2% of the entire total tax levy for all the jurisdictions in the plan. Then you move on to 2018 and 19. The efficiency plan must achieve aggregate savings of at least 3% of the entire total levy for all of the jurisdictions in the plan. And also a part of this proposal, there's a property tax credit, uh, excuse me, circuit breaker 
that is phased in beginning in 2014 and phases in over time, uh, achieving higher levels of, uh, of penetration. So that's a basic overview. I know that's a lot of detail. We could explain that more, but that's as simple as I can get at this point in time. Which brings us to some of the drawbacks of uh, what we believe this plan uh, offers. And one of them is we find it to be very, very complex. We think administratively it could be very costly. And for us, who have studied this pretty closely, it leaves many unanswered questions. It does not credit existing consolidations and collaborations among local governments. Uh, this right here is just an example of what we've gathered to date of the types, the, 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 the number of consolidations, cost-sharing projects, co co collaborations that are taking place right now among school of, uh, districts, municipalities, counties, towns, villages, right here. This is just a start. We're going to be gathering more and more of this information.